operates at the same level of evil. His favor operation will be heavy. Anybody can see that uh -uh, this guy, there is something different about him. Why? Because his dimension of commitment is, is amazing. That was why he said, I know thy works. Imagine you have a staff, staffs that work for you, staff that work for you, and this one comes to work whenever she wants to come or whenever he wants to come, and you always come with excuses, always excuse. You tell him, do this one, you come with excuse. When you want to give opportunity, who are you going to give opportunity to? Naturally speaking, just take sentiment out. You will give opportunity to the most loyal person. The more dedicated person. Somebody who is dedicated to your vision is the person you reward more. Is the person you give more access to opportunity. You don't give an opportunity to somebody who is not passionate about your vision. You don't. So God doesn't even work that way. That was why you see that people like Joseph, Daniel, Moses, how they rise. You know, one of the sins that people commit is the sin of murmuring. Yesterday I was reading something in the book of Exodus 16. How the children of Israel were murmuring that they are hungry, that they have brought them out here to die in the wilderness. They were murmuring. There. And, and this is one of the things that are killing the destinies of many people. They just take their murmur inside of them. They are talking. They don't want to do anything for me. They don't want to recognize me. They don't want. They are murmuring, murmuring, and that murmuring is sin. Even the day God said they should not go out, that that day should be Sabbath. Some people still went out. They didn't go to any manner. They still went out. I was so surprised. The day God said nobody should go out, down, that they should take the manna. The food will be for six days. That the seventh day they should rest. Everybody should rest. He has told them what to do on the sixth day to prepare that you can have something for the seventh day. People went out on the seventh day. I said, wow. They went out and they came out, they came back empty. That's what is happening to so many people in life. When they are supposed to be worshiping, they are going out. That's why they are coming back with nothing in their hands. Now they hear me. This is where many Christians are still broke and still poor. It's not be witchcraft. Sometimes, ah, let's pray against anything holding your finances. No, don't go out when you're supposed to be in Sabbath. Oh, I say. That's why they are coming back with empty hands. They are going and coming back with empty hands. As I read that, I said, Jesus, have mercy on us. They came back when they were supposed to be resting. Sabbath day, the seventh day, people carry their distance to go out. Remember that that man is supernatural. He said this. Praise God. I've taught something. I didn't know I was mad. I'm too excited. <laughs> Amen, bro. God said, when you don't come back, that may make me laugh. I'll go touch your mic. <laughs> okay. So, he told them, please, on the seventh day, don't come out. Stay for us. Some people say, and they come out. They came out went back home empty handed you see now what is happening to some of us God said sit down I want to do something for you, he said no, I need to go out there they went out and they came back empty hands you see a lot of people if they understand that principle they will be led by the spirit and being led by the spirit is a proof that you unlock open doors 
I said, being led by the Spirit is a proof that you do it. You unlock open doors. So when, when God says something, you just keep to it. You just follow it. You just allow what he has said to be the key thing. So he said, I set before you an open door. And those doors are open by the Spirit of God. It's by the Spirit of God. Now imagine me trying to do what God didn't ask me to do. Many things will be stressed. I tell you the truth. There will be so much stress. There will be so much pressure trying to do something that God did not ask you to do. The worst place to be is outside the will of God. Nothing flourish there. That's a, a barren land. Life outside the will of God is a barren land. Life, it, it, you don't even, prayer can't even, the only thing prayer can do is to take you back to his will. Not that prayer can make you prosper outside the will of God. No matter how you fast, you can't prosper outside the will of God. The will of God is an environment where the things of God grows. I said what? The will of God is an environment where the things of God grow. The will of God is an environment where the things of God grow. So you, this month, you need to get more committed to the things of the Spirit. You need to get more committed to reading your Bible, to praying. You need to get more, have more time praying in the Spirit. You have been trying to make it work for a very long time. Don't you think it's high time that it, it just depends on God's ways of doing things? You know, some people said, oh, time is going. I don't have time in life. My time is going. I was supposed to have achieved this. I was supposed to have achieved that. I was supposed to have achieved this. And they are talking about what they were supposed to achieve. But they are not talking about what it would take them to achieve it. It is by the Spirit that is going to happen. It is by the Spirit that it is going to happen. He said, by strength shall no man prevail. You know, when I see people, and some people, and all they want to do is about their life. They are trying to make it work. They are trying to make it work. And sometimes it's not working. It's not working. Look at how to make it work. Who wants their life to work? Huh? Who wants your life to work? Look at the things that will make it work. I'm telling you. These are the things that help me as a pastor. It's not church. It's not church members. This is what helps me as your pastor. What took me from where I was to a point, this was it. This was what took me from where I used to be. This is it. If your need drives you, you will miss purpose. And needs are major reasons why we are compromising principles. My need, my need, my need, my need, my need. You know, you know, when when people exalt their needs above the word of God, what would they give me in that place? What would they give me? What would they give me? They are not talking about how I will render service, worship, and service. But they're asking, what would they give me? And they're missing out on what God has for them. There is an open door. But look at the condition of people that will see that door. I know thy works. You have kept my word. You have not denied my name. And people who have, who, who have kept his word, who have not denied his name, are people that will experience open doors. How the doors will open? Folks will be amazed, man. God does help you. You just see them moving. You can't, you can't tell the hand moving them. But you know that these guys are moving. It's not ordinary. Because they have kept his word. They have retained his name. Let's not go out like those Israelites. That on the Sabbath day they are supposed to be doing fellowship. But they went out to get the manna. Waited, waited, waited. They did not come. They came back empty. There are many Christians like that in business. God say close and go to church. No, I will stay here first though, to see whether any market will come. Market no come from morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. Now around uh, 
six, nine, the market go come. I could remember when my wife used to work for her mother. Her mother had this business when she was single. And she got saved. And I shared with her that you cannot be doing this business when you're supposed to be in church. Then she was worshiping a particular church, not this church. I said, you cannot be doing this business when you're supposed to go to church. I told her, when it's 435, close down that business. Run to church. Go and serve God first. Come back. That three hours you give to God will not kill your mother's business. And truth be told, she started following the principle. One day she came back from church. Somebody came to buy something that throughout the whole day she wasn't able to say. After she came back from church, standing to pack the things, business things, to close the business. That's when a client, somebody came to buy things. There is something about going for worship, leaving everything first, thing first. Except you want to the struggle, I don't give you the key. Except you say, at least, at least, you want to leave this, not change, you look for all this, change them. You know, small, small thing, you cannot do anything big. But if you say you want to do anything big, you need to reverse your there. First, worship first. Every other thing come later. First, worship. I need to spend some time with I need to worship. What is my in worship? Your kingdom rules. Part of worship is that your what is your role in the kingdom? What are you doing in the kingdom? Those things that um, you're doing in the kingdom, your commitments, you put them first. You you get involved in the kingdom. And you're gonna see how the father, because he knows. Once your heart is to do his will, success in the marketplace is easy. When your heart is to do his will, success in the marketplace is easy. It is impossible to succeed in the marketplace without first considering the order of worship. Hallelujah. I'm rounding up. In a few minutes, I will stop. But, but listen to this. People are going out and they are coming back with empty hands. They are going out and they are coming back with empty hands. Please, I don't want that kind of thing. I went to television that, uh, many years ago and went to Siva Beji. People, they watch me. All the time here, ah, you have word, though. You have word. Nobody give five naira offering. Okay, just that I had opportunity. Some people watched me and invited me to full gospel businessmen fellowship and one or two things like that. Hey, but just say watching on television. You can go out and come back with empty hands. It is by the spirit you go out and come back full. That what happened to Naomi. We're coming back this evening for Naomi's story. This evening, make sure you're in church. Invite somebody. Tell somebody. Write to your Facebook wall. Join us. For, for Ruth and Naomi's experience this evening. There are things you need to hear to start readjusting how you think. A lot of us are thinking that we can make it happen. You know, go fit. Believe me, you know, go fit. Oh. You know, go fit. You know, go fit fit your life. You know, I met somebody one time. <coughs> I said, Bro, why in the country? What's happening? I'm thinking about my life. Ah. He's still trying to think about his life. This one I'm talking to you. They think about your life. Can you put your life together except the Lord builds the house? Need to read them back. He said the build, my life was miserable until God started helping me to put it together. In short, you can make decisions that can hurt you. You can make decisions that can destroy your own life, you yourself. You can ruin your life with your own hands. And that is why you need God. You cannot just be a kind of person that says, ah, uh, they don't like me, they don't love me. See, come out all this uh, emotional human being, this thing, and just focus on God. As you don't go out and come back empty, a lot of people are, this morning now, go to the road, is busy. Vroom, 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 airport is busy. Some people are going for business, they will come back with empty hands. Some people, before they enter the flight, the business has already failed, but they don't know. They will go and reach their place and come back with empty hands. Some people are marrying this week, but the marriage will divorce in three years, and they don't know. They are coming back with empty hands. Some people are going into business. They don't know that it's going to crash. They are coming back. By the spirit, you will know what will work. Receive wisdom to know what will last. There is a word for somebody this morning. 
that you don't you know when I was reading that scripture yesterday I said God you see what is happening to so many people they will go out go out with the excitement that my life will be good they will come back with empty hands they had the excitement that their life was going to work but they came back with empty hands the reason for that is keep the Sabbath they're not keeping it they're not keeping the worship they think by their strength David had flaws, issues, all kinds of things in his life what did God say to a man after his heart this man understood worship this man understood worship anything that has to do with God should come first I may have struggle, I may have challenges but God should come first if he take the first, the rest cannot be mine. As you know, come back empty hand. This year, this is the fourth month of this year. Some people have never made any progress. And I'm telling you how to start making progress for this remaining eight months. It's not the economy. People are prospering in this economy. Things are happening. It's not the economy. It's following the order of worship. I wanted to say this. I will never come back with empty hands I'm going to follow God's instruction the days he asked me to go out I will go out the days he told me Sabbath I will keep the Sabbath Lord you will now be my source you will now be my helper I will follow the leading of your spirit I will follow your instruction I will listen to you Heavenly Father, it is by you I will make progress. Amen. Listen to this. None of us can put our life together without instruction from the Holy Spirit, without help from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is someone hearing me today? None of us, none of us, none of us, none of us. You're not that smart. Eh? You're not that smart. It's the Holy Spirit that would say, be doing this. Next week, Tuesday. Next week, Wednesday. Next week, Thursday is our Roman experience. Those three days will come next week. And the, the Spirit of God told me, He said, don't lose sight of that Roman experience. Somebody's destiny is there. And that's why that meeting came back. You're not coming back with empty hand this month. This month, you'll come back full. Because your actions should be spirit led actions. I didn't hear better, amen. I said your actions should be spirit led actions. This month, uh, you're going to depend on the Holy Ghost. He will show you what to do, He will show you the seed to sow. Huh? He will show you the seed to sow. He will show you the seed to sow. He will show you the seed to sow this month. Hallelujah. My need will not drive me, my seed will drive me. Uh huh. I spoke. My need will not drive me. What will drive me? My seed. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So, you're going out this month by instructions of the Holy Ghost, and you're going to come back full. That's a prophetic word for somebody, and you're not going to remain the same. Amen. Okay, let's rise. There is an open door. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. There is an open door. We're not going out this month to come back empty because we're listening to the Holy Spirit for instructions and for directions. For instructions and for what? For direction. We're listening to the Holy Spirit for instructions and for direction. Hallelujah. You're not coming back empty this month. This is very prophetic. Any journey that has no fruit and future is not part of your experience. You will never take any step that will not take you to a destination that is in line with the will of God. No, you will not take those steps. But the Holy Ghost receive wisdom to take the right steps. Receive wisdom by the Holy Ghost. Sometimes God is training you for where he's taking you to. Sometimes training season is not a convenient season, but it's a capacity building season. By the Spirit, receive wisdom. By the Spirit, receive understanding.
This month you're going to put God first. No business, no money. No money, no business. That you know, Leroy had this message: never go after money. Very powerful message. Never go after money. Nobody goes after money and get it. But that's what many people do. Every time they are running after it, they are running after it, they are running after it, they are running after money. They are running after money. They are running. That's not what to do this month. When you go after God, He will send help. He will open doors. Me, I don't like this kind of toiling. Something, you know. I don't know about it. me. I don't like it. I don't like walking with that same fruit. I like to take step and the thing coming. The harvest. That's how I like to walk. But I'm praying for you this month that you will not go out and come back empty. And and, and God will open doors for you. We say this is the month of open door. Remember, there is an open door for you this month. So wherever you're going, have this expectation there is an open door. Have favors will come this month will amaze you. Take your worship, take your word to the next level. Take your worship and your word to the next level. Spend some time praying. Spend some time meditating on scriptures. Spend some time reevaluating your life. Spend some time going back to the instructions that God has given to you. See if there are areas where you're missing it that you need him to help you. Spend some time. There are areas where you have a struggle. Let the Spirit of God help you. Your, your study life, some of us can't even read our Bibles anymore. We have well, not been able to read our Bibles. When last did you spend like one hour reading your Bible, engaging in scriptures? How, how is God going to help you? How are you going to be helped without the word? How? It's not magic. We need to do here. We need to do magic here. You need to spend some time. Buy a good Bible. 5,000 something can lead you to buying a good Bible. And you open it and spend time to read the word. That is how they, he said, those that will have the open door have kept my word, have not denied my name. So today I want us to start a word revolution in our hearts. You know, you go home, you look at some scriptures. You can't be crying, I have this problem. Oh, look at, I have this problem. Crying doesn't solve your problem. If you like, cry for one year in your business. If you like, they depressed, they depressed, so they won't die by depression. Your business. The only thing that will change you is to get into the world and start seeing the new picture of the world. Meditate on it. You can't be rushing out every day, going out, coming back. No time to read your Bible. No time to pray. How will you have the open door? Who is going to help you? By strength shall no man prevail. I read something yesterday. In Exodus 17, the Amalekites came. I will say this and then we're going to close. Came to fight the Israelites. Moses looked at Joshua and said, Joshua, choose men to go and fight the Amalekites. So he went, got men, the fight started. When Moses now told him, I will take the rod of God and stand. I will go with the rod of God and stand. And anytime the hand of Moses was up, Joshua had victory. But anytime Moses was tired, his hands were having pains. Joshua was defeated. That means by strength, the Amalekites was one of them. By strength, combat the Amalekites. We are there. Come on. They put leg, they take them out. But when the supernatural strategy comes that Aaron and Hor, one person, they are going to put some stone, lift up the hand of Moses. And Aaron will be one side holding the hand. And Moses, Joshua started winning. What does that mean? Your relationship with your pastor will lead to some winning. You need a spiritual backup to win. You can't just win. They will defeat you. That is why God puts spiritual leaders in our lives to pray for us, to stand with us. As long as the hand of Moses was up, Joshua was having victory. Anytime his hand is down, Joshua is defeated. That simply means the victory of Joshua is predicated on the hand of Moses being lifted up. So you can see until the hand of God is for you, your hand can get the victory. That's a good one. That's something to write and put as there is. Until the hand of God is for you, your hands can get victory. Your hands cannot get victory until the hand of God is for you. So there is a need for us this morning to, to see to the hand of God that the, I, I'm going to stand on the hand of God this month. The hand of God, for that thing you've been looking for, searching for, writing for, working for, is by the hand of God you will receive that gift this month. The hand of God will bring it. Father, we thank you this morning. I pray for everyone watching. 
pray for everyone in this service. The hand of God is going before us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, we're going to start a seat first. This is the first day of the month. <laughs>